Hello to Darkness344 here. Today I'm just going to be doing a very short video about uh, this, and this is piston feed tape memory. So, uh, if you don't know what a piston feed tape is, it's, it's pretty simple. All it is is basically four pistons or more going around in a feed tape, and it just pushes the block round, round in like a big circle or a square, <laughs> because I mean Minecraft. But yeah, it just pushes the block round, so you'd have a block here, and it gets pushed, whoops, and it gets uh, pushed from here, to here, to here, to here, and it just goes round in circles. So, one of the things you can do with this kind, kind of uh, redstone design is actually use it as memory as well, uh, which is where piston feed tape memory comes in. Because in redstone, you have two different, well in Minecraft you have two different sorts of blocks. You have transparent blocks and you have solid blocks. Uh, transparent blocks you can pass redstone, you cannot pass redstone through, it will not conduct a signal, where solid blocks will as you can see. And this makes it so that you can store ones and zeros, as on and off. Pretty simple. So I have a few designs over here that I was going to show you, but uh, this is more I want to explain why this is useful and also why this is not. Because uh, it may seem useful, but it's also not that useful. Uh, so uh, let's actually get onto some of these points. Uh, useful features first. Uh, well, one of the great useful features is, well, it's extremely easy to build. As you can see, all you need are observers, pistons, and of course your redstone and stuff. And you can just make a very simple loop like this and you just toggle it. You pulse it once and it'll rotate round like this. As you can see, it just rotates round. And of course, if you didn't really want to use observers, you could always connect it up in a big redstone feed tape. And you can make some very cool stuff with piston feed tapes, not just storage. Like, you can make like a nice rotating storage module or a furnace module, which uh, some people have made before, which is very cool. Uh, one of the downsides of piston feed tape memory is if you are using blocks, like I am using, uh, you cannot exactly write to it because that would mean you'd have to replace the block with a different block and that is not really possible. There is a way to do it which is to use more pistons to push the block out. It's like, uh, not on this one, on this one over here I have a design where I can swap these two blocks, this is a very simple block swapper that I've made. And it just swaps these two blocks, and I'll show you this in a minute, and over here. You also have this design where it swaps these two blocks over here. And I tried tiling it, but the problem is, is it's absolutely massive and doesn't really fit in your area. Uh, so this design of piston feed tape memory over here is just a one that I was thinking of that you might be able to use, where because piston feed tape memory normally looks like this, and you'd only read from here, it's pretty hard to write to. So this is a design where you can actually write to the memory just by swapping this block and this block around. Like this. And this is the one you read off of, and this is, you don't read off of this. This is the inverted version of this. So you do not read off of this one, you read off of this one. So theoretically you could tile them like this. However, that is only a theory as when you construct the actual swapping mechanism, as you can see I tried tiling it, because of the hard-coded limit of uh, 12 blocks, uh, piston push length, you can't exactly tile these properly, so these are directly next to each other like this, as too wide tileable. Uh, it doesn't, I haven't, I've tried it, but it doesn't really work, as you can see my module is three wide on this side, and uh, four wide on this side. And I tried tiling it diagonally, but it doesn't it doesn't really fit, as I'd have to have one over here and it just wouldn't fit properly. So that is quite a shame. You might be able to tile it like if you had a different design, maybe. I don't know. It's just a bit complicated and annoying to do. Uh, the other way you could do it, instead of wanting it tiled like this, you could always separate them. But that's just inefficient as it means there's less data per line and, well, just less data in the amount of space. Because already, by using this method over here where you have your read and write, it already 
halves the amount of data you can store in the piston feto. As with this method over here, you can store another line directly over like this and it would not hurt anything. I won't be able to do this, I have to use uh, repeaters to do this. And it would not hurt performance at all, like this, as you can see. It does not hurt performance, and of course, if you don't want the outputs directly next to each other, you can move this one down here or something, and it would still work, just like this. And as you can see, you can have your outputs wherever, as long as your feed tape is less than 12 blocks, or less than all the same size as 12 blocks. But yeah, that is a shame that you can't do proper, you can write to it, it's just it's very annoying and complex and to be perfectly honest, uh, different types of memory is much better, RAM is much better, any RAM module you'll find, or even a programmable ROM is better, I have a few designs for that and that's a lot smaller. Uh, ah yes, and so the other disadvantage about this is, well, uh, that it's slow because of course you have to cycle it each time and say you wanted to get a piece of data over here and you are over here currently you'd have to go one cycle two cycle three cycle four and say you want your data was here but your reading head was here well you'd have to go all the way around like this unless you had a dual way head where you could spin both ways however uh, that makes it a bit more complex and this is really only, you'd only use this memory because it's nice and simple and small to build, you wouldn't really want it to be complex. Uh, so over here I have just a very simple design and over here you have your actual data over here and here this is your address for the data. So as you can see uh, this number is this data and you can swap it around just by toggling it, just like that. And the number 1001, uh, that's the address, and this is the data that you have on it, which is nothing. But say I put some data in, so like this, when we eventually cycle to that one, which is now the number 1101, has the data 1010101100 and that is the data and it's pretty simple you can easily hook this up to a computer and it is very nice easy and compact though it is slightly laggy seeing as you have a lot of pistons uh, one of the other ways to read and write to your feed tape is to use uh, movable, movable block entities like barrels uh, or chests. These are very good because, well, they're easily survival friendly and of course you can put items in them and you'll get an output from the comparator for a 1 and if you take the item out you'll get a 0. These are very 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 simple to use because, I mean, you can just use a hopper and, or dispenser, I mean dropper, and you can take and put items in and out. Very very simple to use. However, the reason why this is an inefficient design is actually a, a game limit and that's just because it's very very laggy and I mean it won't seem too laggy but when I go like this as you can see all those white textures appearing and stuff that's all the entities and stuff I don't really I'm not too too advanced in game mechanics but yeah that's that's not good and this is only one uh, one section and say you wanted to have like uh, 30 sections for like a 30-bit instruction set uh, Yeah, that would be a lot and especially as each one of these you'd have as many barrels as you would have lines in your program and Not to mention it'd be slow of course as well uh, So I mean you can still use this in a computer is but it means you, c you can only increment once basically and it would Technically, if you had dual way, you could also decrement the program counter. You could only increment it, and if you wanted to jump to a certain line, it would be extremely slow. However, it is still possible, as this example over here explains. Uh, technically, this memory could be considered a, like a hard drive, because it has a moving platter, where redstone torch memory would be considered solid state as you actually have uh, just it's instant you can switch you can have as many of these as you want modules as you want 
and it would not take extra time. There's no moving parts, so it is solid. State and say you wanted to switch from, let's make three of these just to prove the point. This is going to make a lot more sense, like this. So we have the data like that, like that, and like this. And we're go all going to invert these uh, like this. Uh, let's just put a redstone torch down like that. Redstone across these. And there we go. So uh, this is your output, and this is your data. Uh, let's get a lever. Say you wanted to read your first one. Well, you could just address it and you'd read your first one. Then you switch to your second one. Very simple. Then you switch to your third one. Very simple. And that all takes roughly the same amount of time as something like this would. Uh, theoretically speaking, of course, this is probably faster. However, say you were on this one and wanted to switch to this one over here. With this, it would take, you'd have to switch to this one, then this one. But with solid state memory, like redstone, you could just go like that. And you'd instantly jump to that one. And that's very useful, seeing as like computers like this, with uh, this computer over here has uh, 64 lines of memory. You don't want to be cycling 64 times round. You can just instantly jump. However, of course, this memory is a lot more compact, as that is 64 lines of memory, which takes up... Uh, why is my elytra not working? That is 64 lines of memory, which takes up pretty much half the computer is just memory, and that's only 64 lines. Whereas this barrel over here is only... Well, I think this is roughly 40 lines. That's what, like, 1, 2, 3, 4... That's 12, basically. 12 times 4, so you roughly have uh, 40... 40... 40... 40 eight lines roughly you have less because of the corners so say 47 46 we we have roughly 45 lines over here and that is a lot of lines of code stored in a very small space compared to that and of course if you do use barrels you can read and write from it however if you are jumping it takes all that time to get round so that's low now let's actually show you the jumping mechanism which is this over here so this is, I just made this very, very simple uh, hard drive, you could say. And it also has a comparator hooked up to the output of it, which compares the number you put in and the number it outputs from its address. And it will uh, tell you if it's on that number or not with this piston. You have this clock over here, which is clocked at 10 ticks, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 2 is 10. And so this drive should theoretically operate at 60 RPM. Epic. Still seems faster than my computer was when it was on its hard drive. Uh, so now let's actually test this. So first of all, we're going to turn on the clock. And let's say we want to go to line 1, for instance. We're at line 0 at the moment. Uh, and if we go to line 1, we can just click that. And I think I've already broken it. Lovely. Or I might not have. Who knows? Uh, where's line one? Let's try and find line one. There's line one. So eventually it should go to line one and stop on line one. Or not. We'll, we'll, we'll just turn off this clock and slow it down a bit because that might help a tad. But yeah, I've, I've had some issues with the clock. It's being a bit too fast. Oh, look. No, we are on line one. So it doesn't even matter. So the clock was fine. So, so if we're on line one right now, let's just disable this and let's go to line two, like that, and then turn this back on. And there we go, we're on line two, just like that. And I don't know why it pulsed several times. It does seem to be a bit inconsistent, but it is on line two, if we can see by the address. And line one is down here. Uh, that was very fast, but say we wanted to jump from line 2 to, say, line uh, 12, for instance. Uh, actually, no, no, we're going to jump to line 10, for instance. That's 8 plus 2. Uh, that's going to take a very long time, seeing as you have to cycle through all that data. You could, of course, make it more efficient by having a dual way, but it's just annoying. Yeah, I did think I broke it, because that was quite quick. Uh, 
but it, it does take a long time and that's very inefficient for a hard drive. It is still useful with this because you can still have your jump command technically uh, using a one of these comparators which all this comparator is is basically an XOR gate just a vertical one like this so it's a bit more simple. Uh, I've forgotten where this design came from but it's a very very simple design and a clever one too so I'll see if I can find the guy and link it in the description oh no extra work but as you can see this is the design you just have uh, like this and then block up like that torch and we're gonna go up like this And there we go, and that is our basic XOR gates. And then of course your inputs are here and here. These would be your inputs and you can just put levers on these. Or even up here if you, or even on this block if you wanted to, but it's just nice that you have line in inputs. As you can see, zero one equals one, zero zero equals zero, uh, one zero equals one and one one equals zero. And there is a way to make an adder out of these as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, Nubasaurus did a video on it at some point. And I have actually used his adder over here. It's very useful. But yeah, uh, one of the things before I end this video is if you are a subscriber or... Well, please like and subscribe if you aren't, of course, you know. Uh, it would be... Uh, I'm probably going to change up my style of videos a bit soon, soon, yeah, I guess, and make them more, uh, I'll probably have like a script, because I kind of do this just off the top of my head, I don't plan or rehearse uh, ahead of time, and yeah, that kind of makes them kind of go on and a bit rambly, so I'll probably do scripts in the future, which should reduce the length of the video and make them hopefully more entertaining to watch, who knows. But yeah, uh, uh, I hope this helped you guys, and uh, I guess, yeah, please like and subscribe. And before I end this video, I'm just going to show you this last type of memory, which one day I may make a whole topic on its own, like a whole video on its own. And yes, comparators, they, they reminded me I will do a serial video one day. Uh, but this is cycle memory over here, and... Well, I think it's called cycle memory, and it basically operates as in you put data in, and it goes around in a cycle, like that, and you can get your data out. Slight problem though, that data, you don't know what that data is, it doesn't have an address or any key or anything, an ID that actually tells you what it is. And you don't know when that data will appear, because if you have several things of data, so let's just wait for that one to go around, say so you have several different bits of data, well, you don't know what they are. However, this memory is very, very cool because it's the most compact memory in Minecraft. And the reason for that is, is one block is 16 different uh, combinations of memory. So you can store 16 different values in each block because comparators uh, can store hexadecimal numbers because a redstone signal strength is... A redstone signal is... 15 long, right? And of course you have 0 as well, which equals 16 in total. So technically you can store hexadecimal numbers with a comparator. And let's just store the number 1 for instance, and as you can see, the number 1 comes up like that. Of course the number 0 wouldn't come up properly because, uh, well, it doesn't, I haven't made this work to do the number zero but it would technically have all those values but cycle memory is really cool because you could store a lot of data and well each one of these that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve that's twelve times sixteen which uh i don't know exactly the twelve times sixteen and sadly i have a calculator next to me 192, that's 192 different values that you can store in this, which would take a lot of memory uh, just using binary. That would be uh, 2, no, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 
128. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4. That would be 8 bits of memory just in this little thing right here instead of a whole big memory cell. Technically speaking. Yeah, so I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe and uh, I may cover this a bit more in the future showing how it can be used for like displays and such. But yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed this video and I will continue working on my computer. And until then, see you next time.